Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to address another request that I've had in the comments um, to take a look at the F45. Uh, I haven't done a video yet for the F45. Um, so I'm just going to mainly cover the MFDs and how you work the MFDs, and then I'm going to go through a little bit of stealth, um, just explain um, about the stealth and, and how you can affect the aircraft and its stealth capabilities and I've set up a little bit of a mission as well to just um, test that. So let me uh, swap you over to my view and then we'll take a look at the MFDs. Okay so here we have uh, the MFDs in the F45. Uh, this is all a touch screen so nice uh, and easy to use and we can set these up however we want to. So first of all, we can see we've got four individual displays that we can pick any of these options on. So we have the um, tactical scenario display, I think that is TSD, uh, the electronic targeting system, radar warning receiver, the nav map, GPS computer, systems management, um, objectives, comms, camera, options, game options, and the radar. Um, now any of these can be, like I say, any of these four can be set up to each one of those or any of those. So let's just say we set them up something like this. So that's that's your your four, your first four. Once you've set these up, you can also set these bottom ones up as well, like mini tabs. So if I hit down there now, the TSD that I've just had just went down to the bottom. And then I could change this for maybe the game menu. And then if I select over here, the game menu now comes down here and I can have this as options. Press TSD and these I can now swap between these three just with the buttons that I have here. I can do that with all of these as well. The other thing I can do is I can extend the top screen with this arrow and I can shorten it again. And notice when I do extend that, the bottom two options become tabs. So whatever I set these up to, become tabs at the bottom of the screen here. So what I like to do is maybe have it set up for different scenarios. And you can do that by using these, these layout setups. So if I just press number one, I've got this set up um, for air to air mainly. Um, my TSD takes up most of the space. You're going to get most of your information from this. Um, you will very rarely use your radar. You use um, shared data from other allies in the area. So most of your information will come up on the TSD. Because I'm flying air to air as well, you will sometimes use the, um, the electronic targeting system in head scan mode. That's really useful in BBR. Um, because rather than putting your radar on to find people, what you can do is you just put this in head mode and you can just scan the horizon and you're just looking for a little flicker um, because obviously the vehicles will stand out uh, against the background mostly. So you're just looking for a little flicker of colour and then you can zoom in on that target and lock the target up. And as long as the target is locked on your EOTS, it will show up on your TSD. So you can use that as a tactic to, to find people in BBR matches without turning your radar on and giving your position away. So that's why I have the EOTS there. Uh, the stores management system, always handy to just have on if you need to change any of your setup. The RWR as well can be handy to show you where you're being uh, pinged from on the radar. Usually if you receive a radar signal, it will show up on the TSD. So the RWR isn't as important in the F45 because you will get that information on here as well. Um, but it can sometimes help at a glance if you've got missile lock and you want to put the missile at 9 or 3, something like that. And then lastly, I have my nav map on just because it's good to get situal and awareness with the nav map. Especially if you have a bullseye on the map um, and Overlord telling you enemies are according to bullseye it's useful to have that on my next layout is more of an air to ground layout so i've just got the eots and the tsd 
the third one again add this is more kind of set up for um, missions so I have my a, a larger SMS I've got my um, objectives menu here I've got a spare one if I can put that in and again just having the RWR up is useful because I haven't got the TSD there so if I do get pinged I can see what direction it's from and I can you know, change back quickly and go from there um, I don't think oh yeah my four I've set up for recording as we can see so to set these up you would position uh, these screens however you want them and then you just hold your finger on the it pops up and saved so that setting is saved now and as long as I exit out of this mission round and just closing the game that setting is now saved um, for my asset basically my F45 in, on, on my computer uh, another couple of options here we've got clear waypoint and altitude mode uh, this is very useful if um, if you see on the RWR uh, sorry, uh, on the altitude reader, if you change your alt mode, you've got ASL, which is above sea level, and then RDR, which is radar above ground level. So that's your alt, uh, altitude mode, that can be very useful. Swap, same as normally, you can just swap sides for your screen. You have radar power here, so you can turn the radar on and off. And if you notice, you'll see a cone appear on the TSD. Let me zoom right out, so we can see the field of our radar now, as I say, you probably won't be using that very often um, because this is a much better system. You also have those radar options here on the TSD. So if you press the radar button here, you can turn the power on and off. You can change the scan angle and you can set it to point track as well, which basically means when you pick somebody up on radar, it will um, you will get your little square on your hood. It will track that particular target. So that's what your point track is. And then over here as well on the TSD we've got uh, what you want to display on the HUD, the heads up display so this is actually connected to your helmet in the F45, wherever you look around you are permanently connected to the display and you can choose to show allies or not, enemies or not, air targets ground targets and missiles so you can choose what you want to be able to see in your field of view um, I prefer to have them all on, some people turn off ally targets, uh, it can sometimes be handy when you're coming into land and all you can see is blue everywhere to turn a lot of this off so you can see the landing pads and things like that, but there's your HUD displays. Uh, you saw me over here uh, zooming in and out, these are your zooms, so 40s max out all the way down to 1 and then you can click and drag on here to move this screen around is pretty handy when you're um, getting targets as well. Next we have our countermeasures, we've got chaff and flare, I'm a regular. Uh, at the moment I have an autopilot settings because I'm just cruising uh, at altitude and over here we've got our fuel. Now something to mention why I'm on the fuel screen is this, maximum TWR max thrust to weight ratio so because this uh, aircraft is a VTOL vehicle uh, a vertical takeoff and landing it needs a TWR of one or above in order to be able to do a vertical takeoff and the, the TWR or thrust to weight ratio basically means if the engine has say 10,000 pounds of thrust then the aircraft would need to be lower than £10,000 in order for it to be able to hover, to, uh, in order for it to take off, and that's your thrust to weight ratio. Your weight um, must be less than, it should be equal or less than, but really less than in order so it can go up. If it was equal, you'd just have a stable hover. So your thrust to weight ratio, the weight of the aircraft, needs to be slightly less than the thrust of, of the engine. So that's why you need a thrust to weight ratio of one or above. You need more thrust than the weight of the aircraft and all its munitions. So that's um, pretty much it for the um, for the displays. Um, something to mention if I just go over to stores, I find this um, quite useful and I struggled with this to start off with. So you can see I'm actually loaded out um, with 
full external pylons. This um, this isn't a stealth loadout, so you can see I've got everything on the wings over there. Um, when you are flying a stealth mission, you may need these external munitions for whatever reason. So I've got air to ground cruise missiles here. So these are long range um, munitions, so I'll carry them on the outside. Um, when you have um, fired the missiles, what you can do is come down here and change this to jettison. And then select the munitions you want to jettison. And then over here, you hold the jettison, make sure it's on SEL for selected. And then you hold it and then press the top button with your thumb. And you can see that's jettisoned our uh, munitions there, so that can be really useful. Also, you've got EXT for all external munitions, so you'll see my missiles go as well there. So, all external munitions removed, all external pylons removed, we are in our most stealthy setup like this so if your mission relies on stealth you want to avoid having external pylons if possible or at least you know ejecting them once once you're done with them and you you're getting close to uh, the enemies so i think that would be useful jettison um, other than that, we have a few options over here. We've got our lights, uh, we've got landing lights as normal, so that's the light that comes off the nose wheel on the plane. We've got our strobe light, the light that flashes to let people know where we are. Our nav lights on the tips of the wings, and FRM is actually it's got formation lights as well, this aircraft for flying in formation, so that's what FRM is. Then you've got your instrument panel brightness lights here, your usual MP3 player. Our launch bar and hook for carrier landings, wings up and wings down. We have VCAP, um, which is the autopilot, vertical control autopilot. I'll be honest, I never use it. And then over on this side, can be open closed, radio controls, APU, main battery, and our single engine. So that is also something to note with this plane because it's single engine, it doesn't have the power of um, the aircraft like the F 26 which means it doesn't quite have the same manoeuvrability and that makes quite a big difference with this aircraft because it's it's a stealth aircraft it's meant um, to be used in in a standoff position uh, in, in BVR combat basically beyond visual range that's what BVR is um, it's not meant to be in a dogfight it's not very maneuverable at close range it's very hard to dodge missiles compared to the F-46 in this so the, the best tactic in this aircraft is stealth um, either stay at distance or stay low to the ground and use um, ground masking um, to, to kind of hide yourself to break line of sight it doesn't do well in close quarters combat especially against the f26 um, the f26 is just much more maneuverable so with that um i'll restart because i've dumped most of my munitions and then I'm going to do a quick stealth test. So let's just restart this mission. Okay, so here we are, here's our, our stealth test. As I say, there's four different scenarios on this. We've got fire control radars, SAM radar, a MAD4 radar, and a single carrier strike fighter. Autopilot so you can test several different radar types with uh, these missions. This one, I'm just going to go for the fire control radar. And I'm going to try and do this. I'll go to mill power so we can try and get um, something relatively steady. I know the SAM is at the end of this like, kind of little valley type thing here. Um, so as long as you fly you know, vertically uh, through these waypoints, we'll get... Uh, the mission waypoints so i'm just going to go on autopilot again i'm going to hit altitude and let's go for 8,000 feet we'll see you later. Okay, there we go 8,000 feet above sea level and again i'm at mill power i'll line back up so i'm at mill power to keep uh, a steady speed and these targets are at about 40 miles. So let me just get this up. So there we go, my targets just popped up. I'm gonna zoom out. 
so I can select this because I want to put it on the EOTS. So I can, once I've got a target locked, I can either send it to the GPS or I can send it to the EOTS. Okay, so I've stopped the video here because I missed something pretty important and a really good feature on the F45, which is down here at the bottom, we get a readout of the enemy. So it tells you what the enemy is uh, that you have locked. It gives you a bearing, range, altitude above sea level, and if it's an aircraft, it will also give you a heading, a direction that that aircraft is heading. And that can be a really useful feature in online multiplayer, especially in BVR combat. Um, the F-45s can act uh, a bit like um, Overlord. They can give readouts uh, of the enemy to uh, like the F-26s that don't have such a powerful system. So the F-45 can pick up the enemy's incoming, give them uh, a bra readout, bearing range, altitude and aspect. And then the F-45s will have an idea then of, of where the enemy's going to come from instead of just flying in dark. And then they could use something like um, the targeting pod to then scan around for that enemy. So it, it kind of localises an area for them to look. So again, can be very uh, useful. So I uh, can't believe I missed that in the video. So I've caught it here. Apologies for the interruption. Enjoy the rest of the video. Like this. And I can zoom into my target. And I just want this for the distance because what this is going to do, it's going to give me um, just a notification. It's just going to pop up to let me know I'm detected. There's no being shot at or anything like that. It's just a training mission, just a test mission, this. So I'm just lining myself up with the target. And again, hands off now at around... 7,000 feet above um, ground level, 8,000 feet above sea level. Cruising at 555 knots. And just from testing, I know we get uh, detected at around 12 miles. So I'm just watching here, I'm 13 nautical miles away from the target. 12. And there we go. So let's say 11.9 nautical miles. Um, that was picked up there, and that's with, as I say, a full external loadout. So, let's restart and try again. Okay, here we are. Let's get uh, let's get ourselves set up. So, that was fire control. So, I'll set the waypoint. And this time, I'm going to get rid of all the external. So I've dumped all the external pods. Autopilot disengaged. Autopilot disengaged. Let's zoom back out to 20 so I can see my target. And we'll get back down. Let's get our altitude there again. So there we are, 8,000 feet, um, I'm just going to hit nav, so we'll go directly to that point. Again, trying to keep everything as um, as regular as I can, being as scientific as I can with this test. Um, there is another thing that we can do as well, I mentioned before that you can send the, um, the targets to the GPS uh, once you lock on. Um, as long as there is a waypoint, on your target you can also select two waypoints so this will lock um, the EOTS to whatever your waypoint is so if I press it now it's gonna you saw the, uh, the the box come up around the hood where it's locked to that waypoint so there's a, a few different ways in the F45 where you can snap onto enemies pretty quickly To it. No, there he is. So I'll just lock that up again. Autopilot disengaged. Send to the target system. Now I'm trying to come at this as straight as, as I possibly can um, because looking at the aircraft straight on is its lowest envelope. And that basically means the, the, the total boundaries of, of the aircraft. 
Um, so if you think looking straight on at an aircraft, um, and if it was in 2D and you had to colour in the total shape, um, you wouldn't use very much ink to do that. You'd have a very, very small envelope. Whereas if you drew it from the top down, you would use more ink to colour that in. So that's a larger envelope. So we want to come at uh, our target almost straight on because that's the smallest area of that radar to pick up on. So I'm getting to the 12 miles mark now, no externals. I've beat my last marker. I'm now down to 11, less than 11 miles. I haven't actually tested this with nothing on. So um, we hit 12 miles um, for just under 12 miles when we were detected with external pods. So you can see taking off those external pods makes quite a big difference. Um, if I was to, to be shooting this target, I wouldn't have been able to shoot it last time with something like an AGM-145, but I can now. Uh, I know, I think they've got a, a range of about eight to 10 miles. So I'm down to six and a half. So we're at about four and a half miles now with that external pod. So you can see that makes quite a big difference not carrying anything on the um, on the wings. And that was at, say, like I say, a, a steady 8,000 feet. So if I was to be um, higher, I might get uh, spotted a bit earlier. Um, just because, again, the higher you are, the more of the underside of the aircraft the radar can see. Um, and lower to the ground, I don't know how much it would affect it in, in this game, uh, but when you are flying low to the ground, you also have curvature of the earth. Um, so the radar, the curvature of the earth when you're flying low to the ground, you know, it can't see you through the ground uh, until you get close enough that the curvature of the earth doesn't matter, which I think is less than about 20 miles, 20 nautical miles. Um, and then it's still got to pick you up at very low level with a very low radar signature, so you'll you probably get a little bit closer than four and a half miles if you were lower down to the ground. Okay then, well, there we go. That's um, all I, that I can think of for the um, F-45 there. Uh, a lot of the things like how the weapons are used are very similar to the other vehicles. For instance, the AGM-145 is available on the attack helicopter. Um, so if you have the uh, helicopter uh, DLC, you'll know the AGM-145 and its capabilities. Um, things like the cruise missile you will get on the FA-26. Um, so I'll not bother going through all the weapons. As I say, the main thing, the main differences with the F-45 is that, um, first of all, it has a nice touchscreen display, and secondly, tactics are definitely different. This is a stealth aircraft. It's meant to be used like that. It's not meant to be up close and in your face. Um, it's meant for standoff um, weaponry like, um, you know, the, the cruise missiles, your AIM-120s, um, fire and forget AGM-145s. Um, so if you are up close with something like an ADM-145, um, you fire at the target and turn away uh, immediately. You don't fly towards the target and get seen. And so all the munitions are kind of based on that kind of tactic, staying away from the target as far as possible uh, and attacking without being seen. And, and also, like uh, the, the other thing that I mentioned was the TWR, the thrust to weight ratio. Some missions do rely on a vertical takeoff for this jet, so you must be below, uh, a t uh, sorry, above a TWR of 1. Um, obviously, the higher above that, um, the easier it is going to be to do a vertical takeoff. So I usually aim for maybe 1.0 or 2 or above, and you can adjust your fuel and things to get the. Um, the weight right for your vertical takeoffs. Uh, and just one other thing to mention as well, now I mentioned vertical takeoffs, which was something I struggled with for a while. Um, that when you try and take off, the plane just wants to kind of tilt and roll over. Um, and I found that it's just because I didn't take the wheel brakes off. So if you find you're trying to do a vertical takeoff and it just wants to roll over as you're taking off, just take your wheel brake off. Um, uh, just let it roll a little and it'll, it will just take off on its own. It also helps as well to pull back ever so slightly on the stick um, for a takeoff. Once you're, once you're off the ground you can let go uh, and it will go straight up. 
Um, otherwise, it'll start to roll forwards a little bit and then take off. So um, just you know, bear that in mind for your vertical takeoff. Just take the parking brake off before you do. So anyway, I hope that will uh, help somebody out. Um, thank you for the request. If there are any other things that I can help with, any other areas that people would like um, a, a video on, or any other videos that you would like on, on VTOL, um, do let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do to help you out. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Autopilot disengaged.